Hi guys, <clears throat> Trevor Swanson with Through the Darkness. I'm glad I could be with you. I'm glad you're with me today. Wanted to talk about a topic that is not very uncommon when it comes to dealing with trauma, unresolved trauma or PTSD or trauma and stressor related disorder. And that's the question of isolation versus solitude. In my journey with PTSD, the thirst for solitude is what I ended up finding was the most healthy, became a very big part of my journey. And as I started to dig into why that was and why I had such a thirst for, for solitude, I found some answers that made sense for me and my particular journey. And PTSD, as we've talked about in prior episodes, I explained how the, the brain stem, the sympathetic portion of our system, the fight or flight portion of our system has been triggered so intensely and sometimes for so long that it's just continually on overload. And the parasympathetic system, which I would refer to as the brakes, the rest, digest, immobilize, is on the rise as your sympathetic system is stimulated as well. And it gets to a particular point, if you can picture it, it's like standing on the gas and standing on the brakes at the same time for a long time. And for me, let alone a car or a vehicle or whatever it is that you're on, if you stand on the gas and you stand on the brakes and you've got a system saying fight or flight, get out of here, I'm triggered, this is terrible, anxious, fear, and you've got the other side of your body saying you need to rest, you need to mobilize, you need to immobilize, you need to calm down, or something is going to fly apart. If you've got both of those systems maxed out, fighting against each other, it leaves very little room for stimulus and that stimulus can come in all different forms for me because I'm talking about my journey your journey is going to be different it may be very similar for me that stimulus comes in the form of people in the form of noises in the form of chaos in the form of lack of order all of those things are just adding on to the physiological state that I'm in and it's not helping anything. And so I found myself thirsting for solitude. And the difference between isolation and solitude, isolation is being alone and feeling lonely. Solitude is being alone and not feeling lonely. And I thirst for solitude. There's a big difference. Isolation is unhealthy in the long run. Solitude is healing to me in the long run. Because isolation is magnifying the yearning to be around people, whereas solitude is soaking in the healing of the environment that you might be in. It just so happens right now, as I'm speaking, it is the start of the largest summer vacation crazy weekend of the year. And that's right, you find me right now alone completely in solitude because that's what my system 
yearns for, if that's what my system needs right now, is quiet, quiet, a quiet mind, a quiet environment, nothing but God's creation surrounding me, the sound of birds, the sound of water, the woods, the blooming summer flowers, there's a fire going in the background. My body just needs me to take action to say, I get it, you are injured and you need rest. I think of the Bible and I think of the planogram, the game plan that it lays out and how Christ himself went off to lonely places a lot. And as I've invited you to do, to start reading the New Testament like a child and just start reading about Christ as he went off to a lonely place, as he went up on a mountainside, as he went up and away from people and chaos and noise and movement and immersed himself in the presence of his father, there's something to that in my healing. Because I will tell you that in the time between me being in this environment and me having not been in this environment, environment, the insides of me, both mentally and physiologically, have changed. Went for a swim with Murphy and had some quiet time on what I wanted to talk to everybody about and am just taking in the smells, the sights, the solitude that I'm in right now. And what I've found is, is that a lot of times what the world has to offer is not necessarily what is going to be healing to you. And by the world, I mean the human world. But what I have found over my journey with PTSD is that God's creation and solitude and bringing him along purposefully, meaning I'm going to sit down and I'm going to actually pray. I'm actually going to read the Bible. I'm actually going to open my mind and heart and soul to the simple things, the beautiful things that it has to say to me. It's never let me down. It's never failed me. And so when you think about trauma and you think about the desire to be isolated, I just wanted to talk quickly about the big difference between isolation and solitude. Isolation is unhealthy because loneliness comes along. Solitude, on the other hand, is healing because you're not alone. God is with you. Christ is with you. And you have a platform to heal healthy, as I like to say. And I'm really looking forward to continuing to walk through my symptoms and my journeys, my journey through PTSD as it has been through my eyes to me and to my family and to my extended family and to the friends and people around me in hopes that A, I can bring hope and encouragement that you are going to be in a better place. That you might hear something that resonates with you, that resonates with your soul and with your spirit, that makes your walk with God even deeper and more intimate. And that ultimately you actually experience recovery and healing in your trauma and your unresolved trauma in your life. So I just wanted to talk quickly today about the difference between isolation and solitude. 
and my yearning for solitude and my knowing that isolation is ultimately not going to be a healthy thing for me. But solitude for me is incredibly therapeutic and incredibly healing. Isolation versus solitude. It's a very real thing with PTSD. I hope you click and subscribe. I hope you forward this on to anybody that you think might be helped by it. I hope you hit the notification bell and I can't wait to talk with you very soon.